Hello to everyone. Today we are going to have a 70th lecture on numerical linear algebra and applications. In the last lecture, we have seen how the system AX is equal to B can be solved by using iterative methods. These iterative methods includes Gauss Jacobi method, Gauss Seidel method, successive over relaxation method. And we have seen successive relaxation method is more effective by choosing the parameter omega. Now today in contrary to that we would see a new concept called Krylov subspace and using this Krylov subspace how actually the linear system can be solved. Suppose you are given n by n matrix n by n matrix and n vectors x the sequence x comma a x a multiplied by multiplied with a x a x square x a cube of x like that a raised to the power n minus 1 x is called a Krylov sequence which we call it as Krylov sequence and the matrix and the matrix associated with the Krylov subspace x a times of x a square times of x like that a power n minus 1 times of x is called the Krylov matrix we would be denoted by k n a x where is the associated matrix. The subspace we write it as k of m a comma x. So this we will write it as span of x a x like that a power m minus 1 x is called the Krylov dimension of dimension m assuming that the vectors are independent. Two basic Krylov subspace methods are being available quite often they do use in the theory of matrices scientific computation those are called Lankos Krylov subspace method other one is Arnoldi Krylov subspace method. Today we would see how this Lankos method and Arnoldi's subspace method would be useful in order to find out a solution to the linear system. The algorithm is quite interesting. The input is as follows. You start with a square matrix n by n. You start with a square matrix n by n. A vector n and m a positive integer less than or equal to n, m a positive integer less than or equal to n, then output you do expect it as a set of m plus 1 orthonormal vectors v1, v2, vm plus 1. a m plus 1 times of an Heisenberg matrix m plus 1 Heisenberg matrix which I denoted it as capital H of m. So I will write it as capital H of m is nothing but H of i j. 
that is i thro and j th column so initially you wanted to find a heisenberg matrix because heisenberg matrix is very interesting which will have 1 1 by 2 1 by 3 like this 1 by 2 1 by 3 1 by 4 like this this is the form of heisenberg matrix so once you are able to convert into heisenberg matrix then the solution will become trivial so that is the reason that we are converting the the actual matrix into heisenberg matrix now you look at this algorithm first step initial step is normalize the vector v to obtain v1 where v1 is nothing but v upon norm of v to norm v1 is nothing but v upon norm of v that is to norm a11 square a12 square like this this is what is a to norm for k is equal to 1 2 3 etc am for k is equal to 1 2 3 etc am do v cap is equal to a vk where a is the coefficient matrix a is a coefficient matrix coefficient matrix a is a coefficient matrix for j is equal to 1 2 3 etc k for j is equal to 1 2 3 etc k you write this h as h of j comma k will be equivalent to v j t and v cap h of j comma k is equivalent to v j t and k cap and this v cap is nothing but v cap minus h j k v of j and end for i is equal to 1 2 3 up to m so you write this as v cap is av and for i is equal to 1 2 3 do this then this loop ends over here this is the typical algorithm of this process now i write that is hk plus 1k as h of k plus 1k as norm of v cap of 2 norm suppose if this hk happens to be zero you can't divide zero with some fraction so therefore you stop it otherwise go to the loop and continue it solving x is equal to b using the arnoldis method is very convenient for the large systems x is equal to b so although we are solving the linear system but we are solving very large systems so a is matrix of bigger size and b is the matrix of the forced vector and x is the unknowns right okay now let us look at into the other way what actually the galarkin method how it works so the galarkin method is required that the residual vector that is r of m is equal to b minus a x of m so which is orthogonal to krylov space k m of a r 0 so what is this r r is nothing but residual so the residual is rm is equal to b minus ax b is orthogonal to krylov space km a comma n since rm is equal to 
B minus A times of what is XM? XM is nothing but X naught plus ZM, which I can write it as, and uh, B minus AX naught is R naught, R naught minus A times of VM times of OM. So, therefore, V transpose times of R naught plus minus AVM OM is equal to 0. So, therefore, you do get this equality. You do get this equality V transpose M times of A V suffix V M Y suffix M will be equivalent to V transpose M times of R naught. So, the Galarka method is very essential in order to find out a Krylo subspace. Noting that the V1 R naught is the residual and it is with respect to 2 norm. So, V1 is nothing but R naught upon norm of R naught 2. So, which you can write it as V m transpose R naught will be equivalent to V1 transpose V2 transpose like that V m transpose which is equal to 0 multiplied with R naught. So, essentially what you get is, essentially what you get is this expression R naught times of R naught transpose divided by R naught with respect to 2 naught that is the first row and first element and second row first element is V2 transpose times of norm of R naught to norm of V1 and like that it goes on the last element last equation first element is V R naught times of 2 norm times of E1. So, the conjugate gradient method is it can be proved as follows let A belongs to R of N N be symmetric positive definite and B is belongs to R of M N N N square. Now define the quadratic form in this fashion that is phi of z quadratic form which is equal to 1 by 2 times of z of transpose A z minus A transpose of B. So, let A belongs to R of N N be symmetric positive different matrix and let B belongs to R of N N define the quadratic function g pi of z which is equal to 1 by 2 times of z transpose z minus z transpose of t then minimizer of pi z is the solution of the equation x is equal to b. So, you want to minimize pi z that becomes a solution of the equation x is equal to b. So, what is the algorithm? The algorithm is as follows a is r of n n n symmetric positive different matrix right it is a symmetric positive different matrix that means all eigenvalues are greater than or equal to 0 and b is a value which is in r of n1 so what is the output you do expect an approximate solution an approximate solution of ax is equal to b step 1 is choose an initial approximation x naught and tolerance tolerance so r my r is nothing but b so you have system ax is equal to b right so b minus ax is equal to 0 so b naught minus ax naught will become your r naught so you will have p naught is nothing but r naught which will be equal to b minus ax naught so, in the second step what we do is for i is equal to 1 to etc do w is equal to apy and compute the step size that is alpha is norm of ri 2 with respect to norm upon pi transpose into w. 
So when you compute the step size, step length alpha i, so norm of r i square is with respect to 2 norm upon p i transport w. So you would update updatively. So when you update iteratively, x i plus 1 will be equivalent to x i plus alpha i p i. And uh, r of i plus 1 is equal to r i minus alpha w. So after having had this tolerance and you need to find out the tolerance. So how do you compute the tolerance? If mod of r i plus 1 whole square happens to be greater than x epsilon and epsilon is a small value 10 power minus 5. Then you compute the beta i that is norm of r i plus 1 times of r i plus 1 with respect to 2 norm and with respect to 2 norm divided by 2 norm this will give you the what you call updating the approximate values. So when you compute this this is what is called a decision vector. Now whatever we spoke let us quickly recall through this example. I have a matrix 3 by 3 matrix. 3 rows and 3 columns. I have a matrix B that is 3 rows 1 column. I have a matrix X naught. So there is a 1 row 3 columns. Now compute P naught that is R naught B X naught that is B minus A X naught. So A is the coefficient of matrix. A is the coefficient of matrix. So I will have B minus A X naught is this thing and ultimately I, we, I use the algorithm alpha naught that is mod of R naught square 2 naught with respect to divided by P naught transpose W. So I will get this question and whatever R1 I get it I apply this R1 is nothing but R naught minus alpha naught times of omega. So ultimately I do get this matrix. So after getting this matrix, I will compute beta naught. Beta naught is 9 times or 10 power minus 8 and P1 is nothing but R1 plus beta naught P naught. So this I get it. That is the first step i is equal to 0. For i is equal to 1, you get w is equal to a P naught. W is already known to us. So P naught is point of 1, 4, 2, 1 this is the P naught and similarly U2 is equal to U1 plus alpha P naught, you do get this. After having had these two, we can define the precise way. So how do you define the precise way of the preconditioned conjugate gradient method? Right? How do you define the preconjugate gradient method? Again, we wanted to solve AX is equal to B is the basic linear system and A is R power of N N symmetric matrix and a positive definite. N is being a large 10 power 6, 5. So large means a bigger value 10 power 6, 20 power 7 or 10 power 8 like this. Usually the matrix is also spares. What is a spare? S P A R S C spares. That means zeros are dominant mostly zeros and Koleska factor is, is not feasible. Since many of the entries are zeros, so you will have a sparse matrix. Then A is semi positive definite, symmetry positive definite and solving the equation 1 will lead to this form. The conjugate gradient algorithm is one way to solve the problem. So the algorithm goes in this following directions. X naught is a initial guess. I start with x naught and p1 is r naught that is ax is equal to b so x is so therefore ax is equal to b x is equal to a inverse into b. 
So I will write this R naught as R naught is equal to B minus A X naught. I do get that. And W is equal to AP1, update it. So I will compute alpha 1 and R1 while alpha greater than 1, sometimes we do take like this. So ultimately you will end up with R of K plus 1 is equal to RK minus CK plus 1 times of omega or W. So then you update this W is equal to W plus 1, then end up. So you do get what we call the XK. So this is a very short lecture. So I thought of giving the algorithms, how the Kravilev's of space algorithm would work for linear systems. So I will stop over here. Thank you for listening to the Kravilev's of space article. Okay, thank you very much.